We. That's that's all we, we. Can, that's all we can ask for. That's right. Okay. Let's see. Dismiss and go live. All right. So hello, world, copywriters, content writers, group members, any unsuspecting person that stumbled upon this this live session or recording. Hello. Um, so if you're new, if you're if this is your first time seeing this, this is Killer Copy Critiques. Welcome. And basically, what we are doing is speaking with my super smart copywriter friends that I know and that I know aren't doing much. They're just chilling at home. So it's a good opportunity to hit them up and learn some stuff. Um, so today I'm really excited because we are talking with a friend of mine, a new friend of mine um, that I met at the Copywriter Club Conference in San Diego two months. Oh, wow, it's been two months now. Wow. That's kind of weird. Um, yeah. But hi, Drea, everyone say hi to Drea. Drea, say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. How's all the humans out there doing? Good. We're doing good. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think, uh, well, Drea and I, we hit it off because we're freaking weirdos and we <laughs> didn't talk about copywriting, like, at all. I think we did, like, the, the initial, like, hey, what do you do? And then after that, we were just, like, making... You're just ripping. Yeah, like, we're just making, like, inappropriate jokes and just... <laughs> Just running around the hotel. I had the A team theme in my head at the yeah. I think that. Was, oh yeah. Yeah, That's, remember that? Yeah, good times. Started it off, yeah. <laughs> um, but here we are. So now in a somewhat more professional setting. Um, so Joya does Facebook ad copy, and I think well, I know that everyone watching this is very. Um, they know about Facebook ads, but they probably don't know about like the sauce behind those really, really long Facebook ads. And they have like a certain cadence, a certain flow, and all of these things that I think they seem simple and they kind of seem basic, but yeah. it's hard to do. And I think there is kind of a, you know, a process behind it. And, yeah. And, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that's kind of what some of the, some of the things that go into it, Drea. So that's what, that's what we want to talk about today and look okay. at actually one of Dre's real Facebook ads. So this is why this is cool because look at that face. She's gonna, she's gonna surprise herself with all this knowledge she's about to drop showing yeah. her ads. So I just talked a lot. Drea, how are you? Tell me about life. <laughs> I'm good, life is good. I'm playing my guitar, learning my bar chords and just writing a buttload of copy. <laughs> Nice. So yeah, so ads and the emails and just uh, yeah, getting out and trying to you know get through this quarantine. I mean, like everybody else. So did you put that? Time. Did you put the guitar there just for this, or is that is that actually where it sits? I I play on this thing a lot. Like like it'll be my little my creative break when I'm getting stuck and I just need to walk away. Uh -huh. and I'll just yeah, and I'll just like. You know, just like do a little tune and then I will like, you know, play a song or, you know, and then I'll like move on because I need to like shift my brain if I feel like I'm getting stuck anywhere. Because sometimes yeah. I just have those, I mean, I'm sure you have them, all copywriters have them. Like you're like you're in the flow and then all of a sudden you're just like, what? Like what? Yeah. I don't know what word I wanted to use. I well, that's know. smart. That's smart that you have something like that's still kind of creative, so it keeps you in that like thing, whatever zone. Me, I just like yeah. turn on some like ignorant music and just like <laughs> like freak out for five minutes, like maybe go outside and spin around and then come. Do back. you do you have a go to song? No, it changes every day. Pretty okay, much, every all week. right. It's a little yeah. personal. We can't talk about music right now. It's a little. Oh, all right, personal. all right. We won't go there. We won't go there. Live. This is a live stream, so. All right. Anyways. So we're going to talk about copy because that's what we're here to do. So like I said, we're going to talk about Facebook ads. Drea, how did you get or like what attracted you? How did you start writing Facebook ads? Like what, what's like the two, like what's the deal? What's like the two minute like? <laughs> what's, the, what's the deal? What's the deal? Yeah. Um, well, it wasn't like one day I woke up and I'm like, I want to write, write Facebook ads for a living. You know, um, <laughs> I, I got my copywriting start um, about a couple years back. I was working for uh, like an online influencer type and she was kind of a business coach. 
and she had hired me to do like some sales calls and just help her with some things. And she made a lot of videos, like uh, video ads. Mm -hmm. um, and she didn't have time to like love on her email list. So I started loving on her email list. Basically, she just put me in charge of start of writing these sales emails. And I just had this knack. I loved doing it. And I just found her voice. Like I just captured like the phrases and her cadence of her writing. Um, eventually her team had no idea if she was writing the copy or if I was, and it was just kind of an aha moment for me, right? That, okay, I'm kind of good at like picking up these voices. And then eventually her clients hired me to do some copy for them. And, um, I did some of that. And then, um, I had someone refer me actually, a, a, a mutual friend of ours, um, he was writing a lot of copy for a uh, kind of a, mark, a Facebook marketing agency. And he said, hey, Drea, you know, send me some of your stuff. Let me, let me see here. So we did that and they had me, you know, do a test copy. They gave me some examples of their Facebook ads that they run. And I kind of like, I just saw what they were doing and kind of, uh, I guess, just kind of reverse engineered mm -hmm. what they were playing out. And I think you know, I, with a lot of copy, we talk about, you know, like, you know, figuring out what the, you know, what the problem is and, you know, agitating that and, and then offering a solution. And, um, yeah, so I did a test for them and they liked, they liked it. And then they kept giving me more work and then, um, it just kind of went from there. And then eventually they're just like, uh, they just kind of shifted me into, uh, doing it pretty much as a full-time gig. So, yeah. So yeah. It, sounds, it sounds like you're, like, I don't know, the, the thing behind it is being able to kind of find the voice and being able to like stick that and kind of integrate into that, right? What did you say? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, you do have a voice and your voice is very noteworthy. So it, yes. I think it makes sense that you're able to find other voices and, and kind of tag on. Do you have, what's like your, do you have like a, I don't know if we talked about this, but do you have like an entertainment background or something or like, uh, no, you used to be a cheer, I know, I know you were the mascot for your college, but like. <laughs> <laughs> I was, no, I was a theater major. I was an actress. Okay. I lived in Hollywood for six years and uh, did okay. auditions. And so I think what I did naturally that a lot of copywriters end up doing later on, like they, they end up learning how to do is kind of you're getting into your customer's head, right? Mm -hmm. Like I would get into like whoever I'm trying to act or be on screen or in a play, you know, you try and like figure out, you know, what are, what's going on in their mind? What are they, what do, what do they do when they get up? What do they eat? What do they drink? What are they thinking about? What are they worrying about? What's their MO? And, and that kind of, that kind of helps develop it. Yeah. Um, the other thing that helps too, I will admit, uh, my, uh, the agency that I work for, they have their clients, because I write for their clients, uh, do a video, a short video, talking about their services. And so that also helps, because I get to see, you know, are they super serious? Um, and some of them very are, they're very direct. And then I've gotten some really like flamboyant, like woo, people. And I'm like, okay, I, this really needs to be a high energy copy, because I'm trying to capture yeah. that inside of them. So that, that's also a huge help for me to capture that voice. And are those videos just totally separate from the ad? It's like, it's just like a part of what, like your discovery process or like, you know, like an intro almost to the client? Um, it's actually kind of part of, it's not directly part of the ad. So the ads this agency typically like produces is they, um, it's a long form Facebook ad. And then the CTA is to click on a link to watch the video. Oh, okay. okay. And then from the video, you usually make it a, make a phone call, you know, book an appointment because most of these services that I, cause these are like health coaches, life coaches. This is like, just so you know, like for everybody watching a long form copy, I typically wouldn't recommend for a product. You know, you, you just kind of want to focus on the product. And, yeah. um, so these are like, yeah, health coaches, life coaches, uh, course creators, um, those type of things. So, um, that's where the kind of the long copy comes in handle, you know, and they, uh, in, in mind. Um, but they, their services are typically like some of them start at three grand up to 10 K right. for their services. So a Facebook ad alone, isn't gonna, <laughs> no yeah. one's gonna like just be scrolling Facebook and be like, Oh, I'm going to spend $10,000 a day for this coach. Yeah. Like it's not <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. So it's kind of, it's kind of that first step to get them into, 
you know, into kind of the video or for some cases, for some, I think entrepreneurs, they'll do like the, la they'll send them to a landing page and let that, that do the heavy, you know, heavy lifting. Well, I love what you said about entering kind of like getting in like the, the voice of your client, because I think a lot of copywriters, we think of like, you know, entering the conversation that's happening in our prospect head, like that kind of whatever yeah. best practice. But like, we don't think, so I think there's two of those. There's the actual audience that you're selling to, and then there's the conversation, like the head of the client that you're working on behalf of. So yeah, I've never heard anyone like really kind of, it sounds like you really take that, like that's kind of like the first step, like kind of your acting background, it helps you like become that person. So I think that's really cool. And it comes out in your copy, which we will get to in a second. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I think that, I think it's important to, to really kind of look at that. I mean, I have to kind of, I, I, I'm doing a lot, a lot of, um, uh, I, I'm running a lot of copy. So, I mean, I've kind of learned to do this a lot, a lot more fat, quick, but it took me, I'll tell you, it took me for like, it used to take me a couple days to, to kind of like nail something down. Mm -hmm. Um, so for anybody watching, you know, if you're getting started doing this, don't beat yourself up if you're not doing it like super fast on the fly. It took me, it took me a while to kind of get, get the feel for it and kind of know that I, I that I've mailed it. And even then I questioned myself. So, you know, and you know, I, I always like to get feedback too. So. Yeah. We all are, I think all copywriters are like just so good at questioning ourselves. It's, we're just, <laughs> like, our, it's like our superpower. It's just. Like, <laughs> uh, oh, our mindset, all the head garbage that goes on, yeah. but yeah, but it's also good. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's good and it's bad because we need the confidence. But at the same time, um, you know, we, we want, I mean, we want, we need to, we also want some feedback because we want to know that our work is going to be, um, you know, effective, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. <laughs> that's, 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 it's always helpful when our copy is actually good. Uh, <laughs> it is. Right. So, well, hopefully you can kind of share some of the, like maybe the shortcuts that help you kind of get into that voice, but let me pull sure. up, let's pull up the, the freaking copy. Um, <laughs> Click, 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 click. That's hey. not it. Look, that's not it. Here it is. Here it is. I see okay. it. All right. So hopefully everyone else sees it too. So give us, so you can see at the top, anyone watching, this is an ad for a performance coach. But can you, Jaya, can you give us a little bit of background as far as uh, maybe the client, kind of the situation? Like, what is the context of this ad? Sure. So this guy is a um, kind of a motivational life coach uh, guy. He used to be, he used to play in the NFL. He's very charismatic. Okay. Um, I actually, I had heard of him. Um, I'm keeping his name secret, but I had heard of him because he was on a, like a, a Rachel Hollis podcast. Um, I, so I knew of him before. So when I got the, you know, the assignment, I was like, oh my God, this is a heavy hitter. Here we go. You know? <laughs> So, um, but so yeah, so he, his thing is he, he's helping people who are already entrepreneurs are probably already making six figures or more and they've kind of hit some roadblocks and they've gone through masterminds and they've got, and they've read all the books and they've gone to the Tony Robbins events and they're going to all the same, they're going through all the same motions that these seven figure plus, yeah. um, you know, entrepreneurs, um, are, are at and they're just kind of at it. They're just kind of feeling stuck and they're feeling behind and it's like, it's kind of killing their self-esteem a little bit. Um, and even in his, uh, his video, which is really great. I mean, he talk, he, I, I, I threw it in the copy too. He talks about like, you know, sometimes you just feel, you just don't feel like you can do anything. You just want to procrastinate with like a bowl of, you know, cocoa pebbles or cereal, you know, and just like, just ignore what's going on. So I wanted to kind of pull that into the, the copy too. So that's kind of where we're at is like, he's, he's trying to help these, um, these entrepreneurs, you know, take it, take to the next level. That yeah. and, and I think so. I mean, the first thing that really stood out to me is just how well you enter not only the conversation that's happening in like the person's head, but it's like yeah. the actual context of like what they're, doing literally probably in that moment like probably what they're doing as they read this is yeah. not far from like what they're doing like maybe they're eating you know rice crispy like cereal instead of cocoa plus but like <laughs> yeah, the yeah. is there and it's very visual and it kind of puts you it puts me the reader like right into the situation yeah. um so okay so what 
how do you like trend how do you start this like what is the mindset as far as like getting in because you know those first few lines are kind of going to be the you know decider of whether or not this person yeah read so up. let me you know what when i was looking at after i sent this copy to you because i really liked it and the client loved it like he mm -hmm. loved it and uh even sent us a special note on it um you know what i noticed one thing i did not do right and i think okay. we should address that Ooh, let's start that? That. Yeah. I'll, I'll admit i'll admit yeah. and um is on Facebook ad copy, it, it, you know, if you haven't noticed, which I'm sure you have, there's really like, especially long form, like really there's only a few lines and then it's, you know, click, you see. have to click to see more. There's that little see more, right? So those, those first couple lines have really got to pull somebody in in order for them to click. So they get the, see, so they see the full copy. And typically, yeah, you really want to draw them in. And when I went back and I was kind of looking at it, is I'm not sure if those first few lines totally nailed that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, of course, like going back and looking at it, like it's I'm it's easy for me to be more objective. Yeah. So I think I might have uh, maybe started with the maybe started with the question. Like I have the question kind of going down. Where is why am I sitting in a pile of indecisiveness? Right. Like because I think that's that's the the main question going on like it's basically like saying like what is wrong with me how come i can't figure out what i want to do here like it's just like that's where it's at yeah so um, i might have like going back i might have switched that up but um going back to your point um and going back into that person's head and personally i i think i've been there a few times in my life just like try when i'm pivoting my career or things aren't going the way i want to do i mean i I'm literally sitting at my laptop. Tip it, I have, well, usually I have my protein shake, but I'm sitting there just going like, okay, like I could be working on this. Like, is it my marketing? Is it, do I need to upgrade my, my website? Am I, you know, am I not targeting the right people? Should I write more on my blog? Should I do a video? What should I be doing on my Instagram? Like what, like all, like all of those things. And then I just feel like, okay, I'm a total loser. Cause I don't even know. I'm supposed to be the expert here on helping people. And I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. So that's, I mean, that's like getting in somebody's shoes. Like that's exactly what I was doing here. Cause I, I've kind of been in that space before, but I think everybody has been there on some level. So yeah, I think that's, that's the thing. Like it's, even if it's, you know, the first few lines could be applied to like a lot of people, but, but seeing that, especially as I'm literally staring at my laptop and the, and the ad says sitting, staring at your laptop, it's like, oh. <laughs> Like I gotta see, <laughs> I gotta see if they're actually here, like seeing, like watching me, just like go through my thoughts. So I really like the intro. I mean, I definitely see what you're saying, how this could kind of get straight to the point. But I kind of, you know, it's like a, it's like a nice, like slow opening the door instead of like bursting through. So like, you know, so I appreciate that. That's cool. That's good feedback. <laughs> um. So another thing that you do really, really well is like you immediately kind of switch the perspective it's almost so like at, at, at the beginning it's like i see you staring at your laptop <laughs> and then you have the line where it says your mind is full of thoughts and then like for the rest of it which we'll get into it's kind of like a first person like you're, you're talking from like inside this person's brain so yeah. how do you like <laughs> how first of all how do you like what is the mindset like why do you do the um actually let me ask you first do you have a name for the style of like one line per paragraph or do you just um you uh, i i i just i call them i just call it punchy i i really don't like um i've heard like it's kind of a i heard it's kind of like a cadence thing on some level but yeah. i haven't quite like like named it myself yeah but I've heard it. I've heard it as broetry. That's like that's oh, like really a okay. Term that I've heard, and I heard it, and I and it, like it stuck with me because I think it's well because like it used you know a year or two ago like you used to only see it with like the the LinkedIn bros where it's like you you don't know how to do this <laughs> there, but you can do the do the do, which is yeah. like not super unlike this vibe because that is like that. It that, is that, like the you know what it is like that. Like it yeah. really it, you know what I never really thought of it that way. Um, my but you're right you're 100 percent right that's so that's so fascinating i mean part of part of the way this is written is okay someone you know scrolling on facebook and i think we can all agree that you know people don't go on facebook to buy things mm -hmm. but people who buy things go on facebook right yeah 
so they're not there they're not there to to shop you know they're not directly look actively looking for the solution they're actually looking for like a distraction so um what what i'm trying to do here is i know these guys are just scrolling and if i if they see a pair if they see a long <laughs> a long butt paragraph <laughs> they see super long paragraph they're just gonna like scroll on by so I want this to be, and I hate, I'm not, I don't want to put a claim on it, but I almost want it to be ADHD friendly, right? So like, they're, you know, they're, and most of them are on their mobile, right? And they're scrolling through and it's going to look really, by the way, the, the format, part of it's formatting. It's so it looks really nice on mobile because not as many people are, you know, looking at stuff on their laptop anymore. So it's really supposed to kind of help their brain, like get through it quickly, get the messages down quickly and short phrases but that is very much like poetry it is very much like that you know thought process one you know and it kind of has a rhythm to it so I, I it's read, interesting that you point that out i read somewhere i don't know like what the study is or what the official reason is for but like when you read when it is written like this even though like you know like outwardly you're like oh this is a, this is obnoxious like why don't they just look regular <laughs> but like your brain like actually just takes each line at a time so it almost forces the person to really like digest everything rather than yeah. like, it's almost like you know we have a tendency to skim but this yes. is like skimming like you can skim this yes. and you're not going to miss anything so and I, I think like you said the context is so important like i think most writers they will ignore the fact that they're writing an ad that lives on facebook so you're on facebook so it's like um like you said you're most likely on it for a distraction so like acknowledging that and it's also a distraction that you probably wish you weren't doing like you're like <laughs> no one's like no one's like yes i am on facebook scrolling the hell out of like everyone is like yes. feels bad about being on facebook so acknowledging <laughs> that and just like having that commonality right away yeah like the empathy which you know is kind of like the core yeah of everything. so very true very true and so, so then you start getting into, so, you know, I think you do a really good job of like emphasizing, you know, I think that's a, that's a huge part too, is emphasizing um, not only like the problem, but really, like I said, like the situation, the context. So it's not, you could have stopped here and been like, you're sitting, staring at your laptop, mindful of thoughts. And then like somebody else, like, honestly, like probably like a, an, you know, less good copywriter <laughs> would have just immediately started jumping into the solution to fix yeah. that mindful of thoughts. But it's so important, which you do super, super well to really, really emphasize like what is happening. Like really, you know, you don't want to be a, a, a doomsayer, but you have to kind of like show that you understand the pains, right? Yeah, you're painting a picture of what you think, what, you know, that person's probably going through and all the head junk and things they might say out loud to themselves or when they're talking with other people or just, what's going on. So <clears throat> I don't know. I'm guilty of talking to myself occasionally, but you know, I'm a nutball. So <laughs> you are. Not, well, I am. I think we all are in a little bit, but you, just, you just show. Well, weird. <laughs> you just show differently. Really well. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah. So sitting on the laptop, mindful of thoughts, and then it's like getting, and then it gets like, you know, like this is kind of like, like, oh yeah. But then it's like, you say something, this kind of hits, deep like when you see this it's like like when someone calls you indecisive they're usually not wrong but you're still kind of offended like yes like, just a little bit yeah yeah so yeah. And, and usually for the person to be able to call that out it shows that they know something right it shows mm -hmm. that they have like some insight so by you doing that it's like i'm reading this now i'm just like god damn like what do you like what is, what is she what is she getting at? Where is he going? Is this man, what is this large NFL player getting at? Is what I mean. <laughs> so how do you transition? Like, so how do you transition? So after you kind of set it up and like, you know, you, you prove that you know what's going on, how do you make that transition into, I don't know, what is that transition? And then how do you make it? Oh, wow. That's, that's a really great question. And, uh, you know, sometimes I have, sometimes I have a hard time myself figuring out when it, I think that's the hardest part, right? Because like, I, I can go on with all those, you know, things, but then it's like, at some point I got I got to turn it around. Yeah. Um, but I think the indecisive, you know, I think, um, I, then I start like hitting, hitting a little harder, like the agitation. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and that's when it actually starts happening. Cause then I, I'm actually pointing out the actual problems right. like the actual 
like things that are, that are happening. Um, and again, it's like, uh, it actually says again. So, but, um, <laughs> what they're, what the person is comparing themselves, they're, 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 they're comparing themselves to these other gurus in their, in their industry that for some reason, you know, they, they're following in their footsteps and they're doing all the things, but it's not happening. So it's, uh, you know, it's definitely, I, I transitioned into a little bit of a comparison and then going through, you know, some of the issues that are going on, you know, or, you know, or what I'm assuming what some of these, the issues are going on. And so that's where it kind of starts. Yeah. Cause I think that, so after you set like the stage basically, cause I, I think like the first few lines kind of set the stage, then you get really specific yeah. about, mm -hmm. like you said, what problems they're having. And then as soon as you, and the thing is like, they're, they're general, they're specific, but they're still general enough that you can have your own, like, use your own experiences to be like my business choices and marketing systems. Cause those four words mean, you know, to each person, it might mean something different, but yeah. you are specific enough that for this target that they can have, like, they see business choices, marketing systems, and they start thinking like, damn, yeah, like my systems suck. <laughs> choice that choice that I made last week, like probably not the best choice. So yeah. I think it's, so it's really important to like you do here is to really feed. This is I mean it comes back to I think knowing your audience, but just knowing like all the past shit that they've had to deal with. Exactly. Bringing that back up to the forefront and just like making them remember how much it hurts. I know. Yeah. Yeah. You're making it. Yeah. You're kind of putting a little needle there in the wound, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you do the magical, the magical uh, strategy is bringing it back to money. Because I think at the end of the day, like <laughs> all of these things, all these ads, it comes back to power and money and, 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 and yeah. you, like, build yourself. No. no, what's the point of business without the money? And, uh, you know, but, you know, it's, and it's funny because the money's a touchy thing, right? So, and that's, so that's sometimes hard for me because, I mean, people are in business to make money, but sometimes people are kind of ashamed to be like, I want the money, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, you need, a, you need like, I, I, sometimes I struggle with that myself because it's like, I want to pull that up because the numbers are important and the money's important and people are, do think money's important, but they also, there's, there's this, uh, you know, factor in there that it's shameful to want the money and to want the success. And that's a whole other conversation, but um, I think everyone struggles with that a little bit, but in the end, that's what people want. I mean, they, you know, they want to help people and stuff, but they want to be able to live an amazing life with, with a great income. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a big deal. And so something that you touch on kind of like in this section, you're yeah. not, so I think one of the most, one of the important things like with Facebook ads and with these kind of long, like, you know, aspirational type, uh, pieces of copy, it's that like, you have to acknowledge that the person that you're talking to like they want to succeed it's not like they've been just like sitting on their ass because they made yeah. no efforts yeah. so, so talk about like well, what does that do do you think like how do you feel like what does that do to kind of you know bring the reader like on your side or you're kind of acknowledging like all of the stuff that they've done why is that like important to well, kind of transition well, it's empathy and you don't want to turn the person off because you don't want to be like, oh, you're, you know, you're totally a screw up in your job, in your, in your business, you're messing all this stuff up. And it's, and, and, but we need to know it's not because of lack of trying. It's, yeah. you know, that's what we want to point out. It's like, you're, we know you're doing it. You're giving it all you got. We know where you're, you're putting in 12 hour days. We know you're, you're missing out on time with family or whatever that may be or what your struggle is. Um, you know, it's different for everybody, but it's, you also have to like, the, they have to understand that there, there's got to be empathy for the prospect. Yeah. You know? That, you know, they're not losers. They're just, you know, they're, there's, there's just some things that they need to, to, to work through. And then it's, you know, it's totally possible. Yeah, for sure. And it's not just like the success of their, you know, whatever, higher, more ROI with whatever they're working on. It really can kind of bleed into the rest of their life. Like, you know, bills, and then it says like I'm paralyzed, running in place. So it's more, um, you know, I think it's the way you, the way you the way you frame it. It's more than just like a new program, like for whatever reason. It's like something that can actually like transform, you know, someone's life. And and of course, like you said at the beginning, like probably not doesn't make sense for like a product, but when it's something like higher end and you're really trying to reach those the upper echelon of performance. Yeah then it has to kind of delve into that deeper, those deeper problems. Yeah. 
for sure. All right. All right. All yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. Then you start. All right. Then we start. I think we start seeing like the light, the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> where, where does that, let's see, where is the line that you would say like transitions? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, again, I, I'm throwing in some of the empathy then, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. It's mm -hmm. okay to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, that they're, um, you know, that they have it, they have all the things they need. It's just, and then as you, as you go, you know, and then as you go down, that's when I introduce the, the client. So I'm kind of hinting at you are capable. There, there is something, you know, it's not just you, it's not, you know, you know, you're not a screw up, but there's just something, there's just something off that needs to be tweaked, you know, that, that we can fix. So that's when we kind of get into it. And I introduced, I introduced uh, the, the client a little bit and that's, and just, you know, just so you know, that's when we kind of throw in a link in there. Yeah. So they've already read so much. So if they're already kind of intrigued and they, and you know, some people already kind of understand what, what we're, what we're leading up to yeah. those people, especially if you go back and look at personality types, there's some people that get sold pretty easy. They're like, um, fast action takers. Yeah. So, um, so the way, um, this is the way I've learned it, um, from the marketing agency and just what I've known from marketing before is, you know, give them an opportunity to go ahead and make that next step before you lose them. Because sometimes they just want to take action right away. Like they're like, yeah, 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 I got it. I got it. Like, I want to know more. Like already, I don't, you've already, I don't need to hear anything else. Yeah. So, um, so that's why sometimes I'll put an opportunity to put like two to three links within the copy just for, just for those people. Just yeah, I love that. I love that. Because you, you know, because at this point, you basically laid out the situation. And, you know, I assume this link would tell them how to solve it. Right. So, yeah. like you said, I think it's super important, especially like Facebook ads specifically, like you have to give them multiple opportunities. It's not just the big button that comes with the Facebook ad that they can click. They can click any link yeah. within the copy. So that's, yep. that's a really good lesson to take away, I think. And, and so, and also like, <laughs> what I really like about this too, is that like, you don't, you're, you're, you're pointing out the person's situation and why it's crappy, but you're not blaming them. And I think that's something that a lot of people want to do in their copy is not necessarily blame them. Like this is your fault, but they need, like a lot of people need a scapegoat or like a reason as to why they're not, you know, reaching these levels. It's it, it, it like, it hurts and it's not really productive if you just think about like, I'm shit. Like I just can't do it because I'm <laughs> like people want to know like why aren't I making it? It's because of something. And yeah. <clears throat> and I think you talk you start to touch on that. And this this is for me. This is where it starts to kind of be like, you know, this is you know the the possibilities or like the options are opening up for you because you're saying like, look, you're not alone. And this is like a golden line. Like oh my god, it's so simple. And I see it, it a lot, is. but it does so so well. Like, it's such a, what is, what for you, like, what is the power behind, like, saying something as simple as, like, look, you're not alone in this? Um, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's basically, I mean, let's, let's be honest, like, we all, like, all, every master was once a disaster. That's what I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> every master was once a disaster. So, um, it's basically, it's the client, you know, say, you know, cause he's had his struggles. So it's his way of saying like, you know, I'm, he it's, 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 I'm here for you. I, you know, I see you and, um, you know, and, and in some cases, like I've, I've been in your shoes, dude. It's, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. but it is, it's just such a very simple, easy line. And it's, you know, and, and sometimes like those easy one liners that you kind of hear a lot of, like, I'm like, ah, oh, how, how can I, how can I rephrase that? But you know, I don't want, but you know, and, and there's times I kind of wish I could, but at the same time, you know, people are scrolling through and I don't want them to have to like problem solve what I wrote. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to, you know what I mean? So yeah. I just want to make it simple. And, it, and, and, it, and I think this does kind of, as I'm like, if I was reading this, I'd be like, all right, like shit, I'm like, ah, oh, like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> and then and there has to be a point where it, it, it kind of naturally starts to go into brighter yeah. conversation. And I think this does a really good job of transitioning it. Like with, and like you said, you try and think of a way to like maybe, you know, play with it a little different. But when you can just say like, look, you're not alone, like that says a lot. And, and it's one of those things like you don't have to overthink. Like you can just say, yeah. 
yeah. my mom. And then, um, and then you start going into what I mentioned before a little earlier, but like the scapegoat, like almost like the reason why you're having all these issues, right? It's not just because, you know, God hates you. It's because <laughs> it's, it's, here it is, the, the, real prob- the real problem, right? The real problem isn't you, it's your programming. And then yeah. you make a fun little. Oh, what do you I mean? <laughs> what do I call this? What do I call this? You're a fun little. I don't know. It's it's a little it's a little brain tickle, right? It's kind of like oh, I never thought my programming. What yeah. could that what could that mean? You know, like, and maybe they kind of get some of it. And uh, you know, I've done tons of self development and read lots of books on mindset, but. It, you know, it's that turn. You know, it, you know, it's that computer that's going on in your head. But some people might have not realized it. So, um, you know, we're kind of programmed to think and believe certain things, and um, and so it's just that little tickle. It's just that little tickle. So it, it's it's another interest. You know, little point like oh, my program. Hmm. Yeah, and I think a lot of uh, a lot of I don't know how to call these people lesser copywriter. What do I think you say? Other copywriters, I'll just say that. Other copywriters, after this, they might go, I think it'd be natural for them to go straight into after you say you got what it takes, you got the goods, they'd be like, let me show you how to unlock it or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, go yeah. for it. But I don't think they're and I think that's what you kind of your pro like they're not necessarily ready for that. No. They are ready to talk about what might be going on, right? Yeah. That's, that, yeah, that's exactly, like they need to know, yeah, uh, it's starting to pinpoint the problem a little bit without yeah. over confusing them. Because there's, there, there's just like a kind of dis, like it, it just kind of feels icky when someone's like, <laughs> if, in certain situations, <laughs> when someone like lays out the problem and then is like, I am the only way that you will solve this because I am the best. But you're not saying that, you're saying you have a problem. Here's what like a solution, or here's like a reason for the problem. And then you start talking about kind of what a solution might look like, right? But you're not saying yet, I am the met person to get you through. Yeah. That's kind yeah. of, you know, we might be hinting at that, but I think having that like little buffer zone of saying like, this is, this is kind of what the solution might yeah. look like. Kind of yeah, you're kind, of, you're kind of digging into the problem a little bit. You're giving a little more information on what that might be. <clears throat> Yeah, and then they got kind of gives them like, ah, oh, okay. It isn't because I'm lazy. It isn't because all of this other stuff. It's like I, there was no way for for them to know that it was these things. So yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. And then you, and then um, I think that the eyes focus on these words, and they and when I see major update, it's very like linked to the the programming. So that's yeah, just, yeah. That's, an, that's like just adding on to the ticklishness of the brain. The yeah. Brain. And then yeah. and, then and everybody got, gets programming, right? Everybody gets like that. Uh, what is that analogy i'm really bad with terms but know. um yeah of the fact that people get it like yeah if your computer is running on you know <laughs> <laughs> on an, an operating system that's five years old like you're in trouble like yeah the computer is running horribly it needs, it needs help so how do you end a facebook ad this is something that i've had problems with that i think a lot of oh. people have problems with is like you laid it out We've talked about, you know, what the problem is. They're they're like, all right, cool. Like they're like kind of ready to do something. Yeah. How, how do you how do you end a Facebook ad? Oh man, that's that's kind of a loaded question. Oh my god. So that's, yeah, well. that's a lot. That's a lot. Um well again, like I don't just abruptly say like, hey, buy my thing, you know, but um, you know, I kind of I kind of tease out more about the operating system and um and kind of remind them again about what they want to do, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so like, you know, I say update and operate at a higher level and then, um, and I really want to put it on autopilot because I know that's what uh, the client had mentioned a lot because what he wants to play, basically what he wants to do is kind of rewire your thought processes so that you can just behave like a seven figure earner mm-hmm. without like having to think about it. You're just in that mindset of, of the way they think. So, um, I'm still kind of like peppering, you know, what they want to do and, you know, why it's going to be beneficial. And um, so the autopilot thing was huge because I didn't want people to think that they're just going to like get some, you know, system that, you know, a, a list of things. Um, but yeah, so, so I, I, I mentioned what that is and then, and then I just kind of, I just kind of bring it home. Um, uh, Cause I, I, I mentioned income one more time. I, mm-hmm. I draw on the money points. Um, and then, 
and then kind of like invite them, you know, yeah. like really what that is, it's a gentle invite, right. you know, is kind of the way I try and do it. I don't try and just like, bam, you know, come here. But hey, you know, and that's why I say, so if it feels right, if this feels right, if this is, we're going in the right, if, I, if everything we said is kind of pointing you in the right direction, if you're feeling this, then how about, how about we take one more step? You've already read through all of this. You've gone through the first step. How about just, let's just come a little bit further. That's all I'm asking. I'm just inviting them to take, to take one step further. So I just kind of call it a gentle invite to, to the next, you know, the next thing. So the next thing to see, to see. So, and then of course, you know, I do the cool and cool and I'm just trying to be very conversational and not pushy and not Mr. OxyClean man. <laughs> you know that guy, do you remember the OxyClean man? Yeah, He's yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you remember uh remember the sham wow oh my god yes didn't that guy, like <laughs> didn't that guy kill somebody <laughs> he did he yeah. no he got like yeah he killed or, or he got into like some like there was things like he got beat up like he got into a terrible yeah, fight yeah, and he yeah. had like all these bruises oh my gosh yeah yeah wow that's fun um <laughs> <laughs> We went, we, went, we went from closing to ShamWow in like yeah. two sentences, I think. I always wanted a ShamWow. It seemed very, it seemed very I'll good. remember that. When's your birthday? All right. Uh, actually, three <laughs> Um, Yeah, and so I think another point, too, that you do really well, which, which is like, man, like so many, so much copy that I look at, it's, they, they do a good job of like starting it off and they kind of hit the, they hit the pain points and then they never mm -hmm. mention them again. So then by the time of the, like at the end, when they say click here to do whatever, yeah, it's hard to, for them to like recall. And yeah. I think, and I think it's, um, you know, as the writer, we can, it, it's easy to like assume like you read the thing. So you remember what we're talking about, but you really kind of got to like lay it out and restate. Things, right? Well, they just went through a lot. So I kind of needed to highlight those little points. Okay. So they're, they, they're, they're the kind of entrepreneurial coach types. They want to make a bigger impact and, you know, and they want to help people. And they want to make more money. So let's kind of bring it back home a little bit. And so it's really, you know, I really, it's really like connecting the dots again. Like, mm -hmm. you know, remember here and here and now, and, and remember what the whole point of your, you know, of your business was. Yeah. Let's, let's bring that back home. You know, I gave them the gentle invite. Let's a quick reminder of what, what you're here to do. And I'm here to help you do that. Yeah. You know, let's, let's, let's take it. There's so. an opportunity to get some help, right? Rather than do this or else you'll suck forever. <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's a fine line because there's a lot of people out there that's just like, they want to like, they just want to, you know, they use the scare tactics, which I know, you know, works on some level, but I think you have to, you're really delicate because people see right through that stuff now. Like, I mean, there's been, you know, marketing's in our face so much that people can already kind of see through yeah. what's going on. So it's, it's really delicate. And there's been times in my other copy where I, I, I kind of do the scare tactic, but I also point out that I'm doing a scare tactic and kind of make fun of it. But it's also kind of letting them know, but, but it is true. Like, hey, we are, I'm only going to take so many clients. Like, I know you hear it, but it's, it's kind of true because, I, you know, I'm one person. You know? so, so I've kind of done that too. Um, but that's, sometimes that just depends on the voice and the copy and, and what they're doing. And, you know, um, so. So what is like, um, thank you for explaining all of like going through this ad, by the way, what is, yeah, your, sure. what is your, what is your like process? What is your writing process for these ads? Like, how do you normally attack these? Oh my gosh. So, um, so my, um, the agency that is technically my client, um, they have their clients fill out an intake form. Okay. Um, and it's a really, it's, it's a, it's a really good intake form because they really have them write out like, you know, you know, their, their competitors, what their product offers, what makes their product unique. Um, they, you know, they put in, have them write down all the objections, any thoughts or worries that the client might have, um, all, all of those things. So um, I typically, um, so we get that. I usually watch their video first okay. because they always record a little video. Um, I'll watch that first to kind of get a sense of the voice and the energy of the person and get an idea of what um, the service is. 
Um, and then I'll go through the intake form and I'll highlight like the really good talking point, like the pain points that are going on. Um, if I feel like we need a, like, um, sometimes I, I feel like I need a hit on what the other competitors do and point out what we're doing differently. You know, I do that in a lot of health, like health coaches. I make people know that, okay, this is not keto and this is not mm. a shake and you know, and those things. Um, uh, so I, so I, I don't highlight the objections, anything that seems noteworthy, um, that might be, that would like get my attention in the copy. Um, I just, you know, I'll highlight it or bold it on the intake form, um, while I'm working. And then, um, I start with the Facebook, you know, I start with the Facebook ad. I do a Facebook ad and then I write emails, like follow up emails for them. So the Facebook ads first, cause that's everything hinges on the Facebook ad, right? So like. Mm -hmm doesn't matter what right after that, like if they're not clicking on the Facebook ad, we're, we're dead in the water. So, so do you, uh, like, do you kind of like, so the flow of the ad, which I took down because I yeah. you know, FaceTime, no, it's uh, okay. the flow of the ad, do you just, is that how you type it? Is that like kind of how it comes out and then you just edit it? it just yeah. So I, I work on the headline first. Sometimes I go back and change the headline a little bit if the copy doesn't quite, because sometimes as I'm working out on the copy, um, some things will come to me, you know, and I'll be like, oh, this is a much, this headline is a much better hook. It's a much better, you know, tie in to what they're doing, but I'll try and like work out the headline. I'll usually try and write out like anywhere between five and 10, you know, um, but if I'm stuck, I'll just start working on the copy. And I wish I had something like more tangible, but I always start with, I think what I always do is I start with like putting myself in the ideal customer's shoes you know, while they're going through the problem. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's where it kind of starts, right? Like that's, that, that's typically why I say, you're sitting here, you're doing this, this is going on, you know? Um, and that's kind of where I'll start building up to it. Um, you know, and I've done other ones where I just do quotes, where it's just like the thoughts, like the actual thoughts, um, yeah. in, you know, I can be funny with it, but that's kind of where it flows. And then I start exactly what we went through. Um, you know, what they're physically doing, what they're physically doing, what they're physically feeling. And then I tie it into what the actual problems are that are causing those feelings. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then once I get all of those kind of, where I feel like I kind of got those laid out, then I'm kind of like, okay, I'm going to slowly start introducing the solution. You know, I'm going to, and you know, and that's like, like, and I'll throw in a little empathy, you know, like, hey, it's okay. We've all been there, you know? Um, and you know, you're, you're totally cool. You're doing what you can. Um, and then, but how about, you know, or let's, you know, you yeah. know, I just kind of start kind of line, you know, laying out possible solutions or what, what might be causing it. And, and then say, Hey, guess what I do? Guess what I can help you with? The very same thing we talked about. But, um, yeah, that's kind of how I. That's kind of how I do it. It's kind. It's semi organic, and I, you know, one thing I have talked about with uh, with some other people is I need to start writing down that process a little bit more and really analyzing it. Because when you, when you, I think you know when you're kind of in it, you don't even realize you've been doing it for so much. You almost don't realize you have a process. Well, I think what you said about starting off with just the situation that for me, like that makes it so much easier. If you like, you just think about what that person is doing as they're looking at it. Start from there, set up the context, and then just start, just start detailing. Detailing, yeah. detailing yeah. the context, detailing the situation, and then start getting the problem going. I think that, I mean, that's, man, anyone watching this, I think that'll be super helpful just because those first few lines, it's, it's really can be like nerve wracking to figure out like, okay, how am I gonna grab their attention? Yeah. Like, a way to grab their attention is just like, be like, hey, Pretend you're like six feet away, like watching them. <laughs> like, so you're just chilling right now, like, oh, interesting. Yeah. Totally spying on them at home while they're, you know, yeah, looking at themselves in the mirror, trying to do their hair, hating their life, or whatever the case may be. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think that's what I do. And sometimes, like, I'll, you know, I'll sometimes just starting out that way. Um, and I'll go back and tweak it because sometimes I'll be like, yeah, you know, I can start out a little stronger. But that kind of starts the thought process of getting into that person's head. So I'm kind of like working it out. I'm kind of writing it out loud. 
just yeah. like you would talk about a problem out loud to your friend and then you'll be like oh i got the solution because you you just had to yeah you just had to put it out there yeah. so um a lot of times i think that's the way my brain works best and so that's the way i kind of approach uh the copy yeah it's it's kind of just like putting yourself fully into their world so you're so not so you both like Bert, the person reading it and you are kind of just like in the same bubble or whatever. Yeah, I, you know what's funny is I was listening to an interview with Justin Blackman on you know his voice work, you know, because he's really good at capturing. Because he's like, yeah, he's he's the guy that like I, I got into voice stuff before I even knew I knew who he was, and then I found him, found out about him, and I was like, you're doing what I want to do, you bastard. Well, he's kidding. the person that recommended you as the face. Yeah. <laughs> actually, so you know, that's, yeah, that's how I got to know him. It's like just like I I you know I was just like I I joked I gave him a hard time. I'm like you're totally taking my my dream away from, I, I forgot how I approached it, but yeah. um, it was like in a flattering, funny way. But, um, but he, he met, like, he was on a podcast and these people were interviewing him and they said, you're Daniel day Lewis in it. Like Daniel day Lewis, like that actor, like if you don't, you, if you don't know much about Daniel day Lewis, like he played Lincoln and he was uh, in a bunch of, you know, huge movies, uh, last Mohicans, you know, won a gazillion Oscars, but he's no. known yeah. for when he's, yeah, you look him up, Daniel day Lewis. So when he, when he's getting ready to play a part, like six months or more ahead, he is pretending to be that character, like driving his family and friends nuts. Yeah. He embodies, like, does it, you know, and, and I kind of like, I kind of pull from, from that a little bit. So Daniel Day-Lewis, man. That's so funny that you and Justin, you know, you both kind of have a entertainment background, I'll say. And, yeah, that, yeah. and I think having that, man, I've never like made that connection, but I think because you both have that voice, like that's a huge part of your of your work and really diving in to that voice. And, cause, and I think that makes probably like makes your job easier. Like once you're in the voice and you're like, I'm this person, and then you start writing copy and then it kind of just like, you know, you don't have to really think about like what, like how to, you know, be clever. Yeah. Or well, now you're just like talking it, as yeah. if you want. And it doesn't have to be hard. I mean, those are just like, some of those are just kind of basic acting, you know, methods and things that people do, but they're not groundbreaking. They're not right. brain busting. Right. It, you know, uh, you can, you know, you can easily start jotting down just, you know, day-to-day -day habits and how are they interacting with people? And again, like finding their, what's their motivation? I think that's a huge factor, you know? Um, you know, I, I feel like most entrepreneurs, I mean, they're in it to like, when I'm writing for that, I, I get, I, I, you know, they want to make money, they want to be successful, but a lot of them are, you know, um, a type personalities, you know, um, and some of them are like huge givers person, you know, learning person out the whole personality stuff, like whether yeah. it's the Enneagram or whatever, like, I think that's helpful too, because you can kind of pull out some of that in your copy if you're familiar with. The that's, personality a, that's a nice little tidbit. I never thought of that. Yeah. What yeah. Is it? So the Enneagram is great. Um, there's a colored one that's really simple. It's got like, I think it's four color types. Mm -hmm. You know, but when there's ones that's like animal types, so like, you know, monkey and eagle and stuff, but you can kind of guess like monkey's the person who's motivated by fun. Yeah. Um, that's me. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, so anyway, it's always worth, I think, looking, looking at personality types. Um, oh, there's, you know what, Tyler, there's one more thing I think we should point out that, do you mind? On the copy? Yes. Yeah. Uh, not in the copy itself. Oh, just but the, but the But the long form copy. Like the you, want me to pull the, form. you want me to pull the doc back up? Well, we, oh, no, I don't think we need to. Okay. It's not so much the copy itself, but it's the... Oh, so you're just prefacing an epic, an epic tidbit that you're about to <laughs> Okay, no, it's not an epic tidbit, but here's the thing. I think a lot of people shy away from long form copy because it's a lot, right? It's a lot for somebody to be scrolling through and read through. Um, and I, did I, and maybe I mentioned this before, maybe, maybe because my brain's half dead now, but I want to point out that <laughs> what's beautiful about long form copy is if it's done right, it pre-qualifies that prospect. So you're your click-through rates, so because Facebook ad stuff, the algorithm and how you target the ads, that's a whole other conversation, and I'm not even like an expert on that. But what I do know is um, you're, the click-through rates on these long-form Facebook ads and people are running them, they're not going to be super high. 
but if they're done right, the conversion rate is gonna be higher because think about it. If someone took the time to read that entire copy, they just qualify themselves. Like that means that, that is, that's the person that's gonna be most interested in getting the help. So I think that's super important to point out. Yeah, it just, shows, it just shows intent, right? Because I think last, so last week I had uh, my friend Donnie on and he, he does emails and he had, he talked about, he had the long, he had basically the long form email and then the shorter form. And he said the shorter form like killed it with the clicks. But then you look yeah. at the back end, you look at the conversions and it's way, way lower. So yeah, like you said, I think the long form, it's, it just shows way more intent that like, if you click this, you read yeah. everything, you, you get it. And so yeah. it's going to be just way, way, way more likely that whatever you click through to, you're going to want to follow through. So I think so too. I think so too. I think some clients are so stuck on like maybe ones that are semi new and they're getting started. They're, they're putting all their dollars and worries into clicks yeah. and that's pretty much the the conversions you know they kind of get stuck on the the uh Vanity. the big big numbers right yeah instead of the quality so yeah that's a good point quality quality matters <laughs> um, I, hope. Well, I mean i don't know i'm just <laughs> do you have so thank you again but yeah do you have any if you could leave the audience that really so they they love facebook ads they love they love the idea of writing long form ads they love how you explained it they mm -hmm. love the poetry aspect what is one like takeaway that you could give like an aspiring really good facebook ad copywriter just if, <laughs> be it be it either like the research phase or just like oh finishing phase like whatever what is like one oh. big takeaway you think that would make like the biggest difference I think the biggest takeaway is pull some ads that you already long form ads that you think are fantastic. Yeah. Um, I know copy hackers, you know, they, they have a, a article on long form Facebook ads too, but I would pull from, you know, from the long form that you, you know, if, especially if you know they're converting well, but pull from those and reverse engineer them just like we did here, yeah. you know, and you're going to see there's a pattern. Mm. And sometimes it's switched around a little bit. Sometimes, you know, the, you know, it's going to be a little more clever or funny, but the basics are going to be in there. And that's typically, you know, like, like, you know, really putting, you know, showing the empathy and pointing out a problem and, and introducing the solution. And that sounds super simple, but I, th but you can see the flow and how the thought process processes go and how every how all the, you know, how you can connect all the dots. I think that's key, but Practice reverse engineering something. Like, take a piece of copy. Uh, this is what I this is what I did when I first started. I took a piece of the agency's copy. They gave me samples, and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna. What do they do here? What do they do here? Okay, oh, okay. So they're they're you know throwing out all the problems. Now they're saying all the cool stuff we can do for them. I'm like, cool, cool, and and I just use that for a different type of service. Like, right. I, and I kind of followed that model. Yeah. Um, I think that's like reverse engineering and then just doing it on your end and then just keep repeating the process. And then as you go, you can like, you can tweak and, and, and move things around a little bit and be a little more playful uh, and then work a little bit more on the voice and the, uh, you know, and the vibe, the energy of what's going on in the copy. Yeah. I don't know how many people watching this know this, but like when you go and look like you're scrolling through Facebook, you can save ads. You can have your own little swipe file. Do you do, you do this? You like, no. You know, it's funny because I've wanted to save ads. I didn't know I could save an ad. This yeah. Is so, <laughs> I am so smart. Um, so, actually, yeah. So, when you – I can share my screen real quick. So, I'll share. Yeah, sure. Share it. I'll show you and the world. You show me, Tyler. I'm going to show you some stuff. All right. So, when you're on Facebook and here's an ad, you just click – the freaking three dots and you click save video and then you can have a collection so you can add it to a collection what? and then so i have a collection called copy ads which is basically my facebook swipe file um and then if you look in there yeah copy ads and then i have a list of like 40 ads. yeah i have 40 ads in here that i've just seen get the fudge <laughs> out of town this is the coolest thing ever oh man i should oh you're my new best friend i'm coming to oakland i'm buying you a 
grind you a beer. That's it. Oh um, my God, that's amazing. All right, so cool. I should have so cool. showed this off earlier. But yeah, so this is. Like, <laughs> this it's is, like everyody's there. Everyone's like, ah, it's gone on too. Like, every, like this is, for yeah, me, this is, this is the highlight like, of the interview right now. Don't do like screenshots and stuff that'll just get lost on your desktop like mine. Yes. So like, this is just way easier. You can have a collection and you can always go back. You can oh you can my God. You can do thing on Instagram too. If you bookmark the ad, you can add it. You can create a collection on there. So. Um, oh, I'm, this is amazing. I'm just, I'm blown away now. I'm so psyched. <laughs> I'm here to please. You're here to please, so. Cool. Um, so I think that is an hour worth of amazing killer copy critique with Drea. Woo -hoo! I don't know how to say your last name. Oh, it's Next. it's pronounced fate, like F A T E. Oh, I, I think I Yeah, know. but it looks like fetched or fecked or yeah. <laughs> Drea Fate. You never cease to amaze me. Thank you for coming on and sharing some knowledge and just good energy for the rest of the week. Cause it's Wednesday. People are, you know, feeling Wednesday E. So hopefully this gave anyone that's watching a little bit more energy. Gave me some energy. Yeah. Good. Doing something right. <laughs> yeah. So thank you again, Drea. Thank you everyone else for watching. Um, I didn't ask or check if anyone had any questions. So sorry, but if you do hit, up drea hit up me hit up the killer copy critiques group because there's a lot of smart people in all three of those things that i just mentioned so peace be well write more good copy ah, <laughs> all right bye, bye thanks. <laughs> stop live stop. Oh.